probably what I what I learned the most from the spreader training was that uh, there was not an exact science to to doing this. Uh, you're going to have to have to do a little bit of uh, adjusting, a little bit of trial and error, and uh, uh, just you know try some different things. I found the spreader training day to be useful, and you know seeing what a couple other machines, other than just our machine, you know how it would do spreading to you know compare and make changes to ours to help us. After going through the spreader training course today, it boosted my confidence. Um, before we just kind of dumped the gypsum in, um, I kind of learned to feather it in now. It keeps it from packing down and spreads out a lot easier. Hi, I'm Ron Chamberlain, Chief Agronomist for Gypsoil brand Gypsum, and today we're going to talk about how to apply gypsum. Gypsum has been used for centuries around the world. As a matter of fact, Ben Franklin used gypsum on his farms. But today, uh, most growers are unfamiliar with how to spread gypsum. This video will give you the information you need to successfully apply Gypsoil brand gypsum. It will detail spreader selection, proper setup tips, storage of material, tips on successfully applying the material, as well as loading of the spreader. What you're watching today was produced at an actual field day demonstration. So you will see and hear uh, real life experiences in setting up these spreaders. Gypsum is quite different from most other bulk materials that you may have had experience with. It's very fine and uh, requires some learning on how to how to handle it. But once you figure it out, it's really not difficult. Some of the models commonly used to spread gypsum uh, are those that are designed to handle bulk materials such as BBI, Chandler, and New Leader. These are designed with wide chains and steep sides to help the material flow more smoothly through them. Some spreaders are set up with additional equipment uh, here and this has to be removed before we spread gypsum. Now that we've removed it, you can see that we have a much open, more open area here for the material to flow, which is very important. We need to have the material flowing off the belt, uh, unrestricted onto the fans. As you can see, gypsum is a very fine material, and as it flows off of the belt onto the fan and hits the blade, it's going to uh, remain on the blade for just a little bit longer than if it was a granular. And therefore, uh, as it comes around, it's going to be placing more on the outer edges of the, of the uh, pattern. So what we want to do here is we want to push this deflector so that it drops the gypsum sooner on the blade so that when it begins to release, it releases in the center of the spread pattern, we have a more uniform pattern. Our goal is to control when the material drops onto the spinners. Uh, some units are set up that the, the guide assembly moves and allows the material to flow where you want it to. Others are set up where the entire spinner assembly moves, okay? So our goal here with this particular one is set up so that the guide assembly moves. What we want to do is we want to unlatch it on both ends and move the unit forward, which allows the material to fall on the spinners sooner. This is another unit, and as you can see, it has additional equipment here for other products. This would also be removed. And then once it is, the material will fall from the belt directly onto the spinner assembly. In this case, the entire spinner assembly is uh, adjustable. And so what we want to do is we want to adjust this spinner assembly so that the gypsum drops on the spinners sooner. And so we would do that with this adjustment here. Uh, in this case, for gypsum farther back, okay, for fertilizers, we want to move it forward. This is a unit that's set up perfectly for gypsum. As you can see, it's stainless steel. It's got slick, steep sides and a wide belt. But in addition, it also does not have the assembly for the shield over the belt. So we have nothing in the uh, interior here that's going to cause any kind of bridging uh, with gypsum at any time. We'll be applying gypsum typically at uh, one ton to two tons per acre. So there's gonna be a large amount flowing uh, underneath of this door. Uh, and our goal here is to have the material flowing in such a way that it flows uniformly onto the spinners. If the door opening is too wide, uh, it will come out in chunks and it will have pulsation in terms of the spreading pattern will be very, very non-uniform. 
So we'll want to have the door low enough that we get a, a constant flow. So what this means is if you're driving uh, your spreader at 10 miles an hour or less, the door opening is probably going to be lower uh, so that the material coming through is, is at a, a lower level, um, shorter in height, and ultimately flowing onto the belt. But if you're driving 21 miles an hour and putting on a ton per acre, uh, you're going to have to have the door much farther open and it will flow off and come onto the spinners and, and still give us a uniform pattern. So the door height is very important. It's really driven by the rate of the gypsum as well as the speed of the, of the applicator. Here we have a, another bed, a different uh, setup. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, stainless steel, but it's painted. And unfortunately, gypsum sticks to paint, so it tends to want to hang up on the sides. Uh, in addition to that, as you can see, we have a very large shield here that is over the belt, and it's close enough to the belt that gypsum will actually bridge as a result of having this shield here. So uh, if the gypsum, in this case, when we spread, it was raining, uh, it tended to be more difficult to use, but the combination of the painted sides and the shield has created an issue here where we get a lot of bridging and we just don't get the flow of the gypsum that we need down onto the belt. It's best to store gypsum inside out of the elements, but if that's not possible, uh, you can store it outside. Whether you're stockpiling gypsum at the farmstead or out in the field, uh, it's best to stockpile it at least 200 feet away from the nearest drainage channel. Most of these machines have electronic controls and uh, the bulk density of the material is uh, programmed in. The spreader width, the speed, the application rate, all these things are programmed into this. So uh, initially it's going to take a little bit of uh, trial and error to get the, the rate down correctly, but uh, once you have it there and it's recorded, uh, it's pretty much uh, a constant for that particular machine that you can use year in and year out. When do we apply gypsum? Well, the best time is any time that you can drive over the field and not harm the soils or the crops. So as a general guideline, most gypsum is applied after harvest um, and before planting and on, on uh, alfalfa, uh, you know, any time after cutting after the hay has been removed from the field. It is water soluble, so in a no-till situation, there's no need to incorporate it. It moves itself through the soil profile. But in a tilled environment, it's also very effective because the tillage will move it down into that profile where we need to, where we need to operate. So it doesn't dictate uh, what we do in terms of tillage. Now, here's how we determine our application rate recommend recommendations. Gypsum is affecting soil chemistry, balancing soil chemistry. So uh, how much chemistry the soil holds kind of determines how much gypsum we use. So we use a CEC, cation exchange capacity, as our guide. Uh, if it's less than 10, we recommend a half a ton per acre. The CEC is 10 to 15, we recommend a ton. And if it's over 15, we recommend two tons per acre. These are rates that we've used commercially for a number of years. We have been able to succeed in making our soil changes that we need without creating imbalances of other things. When loading gypsum, it's important to feather the material into the spreader bed, loading it from front to back. And the first load or two, load it very, very light until you get used to how the material is going to flow. When you're loading the material, be sure to avoid picking up debris that would cause the spreader truck to plug up. And finally, when you're preparing the pile, push it up into a peak so that there are no voids to catch rainfall. Before this training, I was probably a little bit apprehensive as far as how well this would, would spread. Um, but after today, uh, we did it in some pretty adverse conditions. Uh, speaking with my applicator and things, uh, it looked like it fed through fairly well. We've had a pretty good handle on, uh, especially by the time we had went through all the uh, different adjustments and things like that, on how to spread it and how well it spread. And um, it was getting some pretty nice patterns and, and it was working out real well. I feel uh, more comfortable now spreading after seeing some you know different techniques and different machines running the same product and things I can change now to do a better job with what I've got. One big tip I would give while loading gypsum is come into the pile and try not to scoop any debris off the ground. Some of the changes that we had to make was our gate setting as far as uh, the, the uh, height of that. Some other changes with speed and uh, we did talk about some uh, uh, spinner speed also as far as how far the, it would throw the actual material and 
and uh, get a good pattern from that. The best piece of advice I could give is uh, you're just gonna have to start with uh, smaller loads and you know really figure out what works best for your situation you know on what you're spreading. If you're gonna store gypsum in a field and not spread it right away I would strongly recommend pushing it into a peak to help shed the rain. Hopefully we've answered your questions about applying Gypsoil brand gypsum. If you'd like more information find us on the web at gypsoil.com or call us at 1-866-GYPSOIL. <laughs>